Kokota is a tiny islet in the Zanzibar archipelago off the coast of Tanzania in East Africa. For centuries, Kokotans have prospered by making a living off the land and sea. It is not the kind of place you'd expect to find people innovatively adapting to climate change. But that's exactly what they're doing. Life here hinges on solving huge problems. Things like deforestation, water shortages, and a collapsing fishery. Climate change is making all of their problems even worse. And Kokotan's survival depends upon their ability to adapt. We can start to get a feeling of how disastrous global deforestation would be by looking at Kokota. Without a tree canopy, ground temperatures skyrocketed. Soils couldn't retain moisture, and without the grip of a dense network of tree roots, they quickly turned into dust. Mbaruk Musa Omar is from the neighboring island of Pemba. When he visited Kokota for the first time, the islet was teetering towards collapse. Madangu ya manzo nilipofika Kokota. Kwamba licha kwamba watu ni maskini sana. Hakuna shule. Hapana dispenser. Hakuna umeme. Hakuna maji. Nitaka nisaidie lakini nitafanyaje? Mimi maskini sikuwa na uwezo wowote ambao kiasi fulani naweza nikuwasaidia watu wa kukota. Baruch realized that his island, Pemba, was headed in the exact same direction as Kokota. Hasa jeto likiongezeka ina maana nalo vyanzo vingi vya maji vina vinapotea. Lakini sasa hivi mito yote inapita maji pengine iko hivi au iko hivi ndio sana sana ni Kwa 
na miti inapoendelea kupotea Baruch thought that if he could figure out how to get trees in the ground in Pemba, that he might be able to do the same for Kokota. Baruch also knew he couldn't tackle island-wide reforestation alone. So he recruited Jeff Schnur, a 21-year-old Canadian tree planter. I came to Pemba seven years ago now, and uh, I was just living here. I was trying to write a novel at the time. Uh, didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life. And Baru kind of heard that I was a tree planter, came and we spent several long evenings just discussing, you know, what tree planting could look like here in Pemba. It was all fairly amateur. We didn't have a lot of the expertise, but we had a lot of um, drive and motivation. And that first year we were able to grow 100,000 seedlings. It was an operation run on a smile and a handshake. And we started getting support. The Finnish embassy supported us. Um, and then the European did, Union did. And that really helped us take it to the next level. Baruch and Jeff were the perfect team. While Jeff concentrated on international fundraising efforts, Baruch could focus on managing things on the ground. He immediately headed back to Kokota. Sasa nyinyi kipi jambo gani ambalo mnahitaji sisi tuweze kuwasaidia la mwanzo la muhimu. Wao wakasema bwana sisi tazo letu la mwanzo tunachohitaji sisi ni maji. Eh shughuli mbaya ninazofanya kwa kusevu yale maji tuliona. Kiufupi maji ni kwamba yanatumika kwa masuala ya kupikia lakini sasa katika shughuli nyingi sana ni kwamba tunatumia maji chumvi. Kama kuoshea vyombo ata maji ya kijaji ndio utaona mwenyewe watoto wanachezea chumvi wanaogelea ogelea ndio wanaoga kabisa vile pengine tangi ya lita 20 kwambe utumika itumike kwa siku mbili matano inakuwa sasa ile kunywa kunywa tu basi kwa siku lita 20 inakuwa zinamaliza na hata ukichimba kwenye ardhi ya kokota basi unapata salt water lakini upeli ni kwamba watu wa kokoto walikuwa wanasafa zaidi ya masaa 15 wao waache shughuli zao za kimaendeleo hiyo yani ilikuwa ni kazi mahususi mradi wetu tulionao sisi ni kutokana na rainwater harvesting. Uvunaji wa maji ya mvua. Tutapata wapi hicho chanzo cha kuvuna maji ya mvua? Nyumba walizonavyo ni vibanda tu vibanda 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 vya makuti yaani vibovu vibovu. Baruch's idea was to build Kokota's very first school and use the roof to collect rainwater. Kokotans worked round the clock for months to complete the water tank and the school. And in March 2012, Kokotans were finally able to turn on a tap. Kwa kweli ilikuwa kama ni dream. Kiasi ambacho watu hakuamini. Ilikuwa maji sijui ni hadithi ni simulie vipi. Lakini kama kitu ambacho kama ndoto leo matokeo yake imekuwa kweli. Unajua mpaka kesho kuanzisha nasari kokota na uvinje ni tatizo kubwa. Na tatizo kubwa linalokuja ni suala la maji. To help Kokotans conserve their precious water, a group of women in Pemba volunteered to grow thousands of seedlings in their own nursery to establish a new forest in Kokota. Naweza kusema eneo ambalo limetengwa kwa ajili ya ya uhifadhi wa misitu ni karibu ya 
asilimia arobaini ya kisiwa cha kukota. Naweza kusema hadi hapa tulipo ni karibu miaka mitatu. Na hizi ndogo ndogo mitatu takikwa mpangilio ambao utasaidia kwamba ukiondoka huu mwingine unaweza kuzaa. It was economic development on one side. Communities were planting trees for fruit, timber to make a living. But the end result was an area that was now covered in trees. Yes, you could harvest some trees and you still had a forest. Conservation was a day job. Our model is that economic development is directly opposed to environmental conservation. We can't conserve the natural world because we need jobs. We, yes, we need to fight climate change, but look at the cost. We can't afford to do that, we're in a recession. That's a completely ludicrous way of thinking, and Pemmin showed us that. Economic development and environmental conservation are not opposed, they're actually intertwined. In addition to their reforestation efforts, Kokotans have completely revamped their approach to farming and are now using renewable energy to charge portable household batteries, proving that adapting to climate change doesn't have to lead to a less comfortable lifestyle. Nabaharini. When you look at the whole planet, you can get overwhelmed. And you, you realize looking at Kokoda that that's the planet. We're good at taking mother nature and using it to, to support us. We're good at growing, but there's a limit. It's not even about sacrifice. It's about changing and shifting our way of thinking. Pick the smallest problem you can solve. We didn't plant 1.3 million trees overnight. It was one seed at a time at first. One community at a time. It was actually a small problem because it wasn't on the Pemben scale or the global scale. It was, it was just a couple of people with an idea and a hope that they could actually do it. Just like a prisoner when he's sent in 